Please be seated. It's a joy to be with you this evening, and I want to thank Rob for the invitation. It's the time when I miss my cathedral in Portland, uh, but it's great to be here. It's great to be here. The Christian Church has long wrestled with how to mark the Thursday before Easter, being mindful that Passover and Easter are not the same despite our rootage in Jewish tradition and practice. I grew up in the Presbyterian Church in Leroy, New York, and for First Presbyterian, Monday Thursday was one of the big days of the year. Now, we celebrated on that day the institution of the Lord's Supper, the institution of the words over the bread and the wine, and we commemorated that great event with a potluck dinner and with the celebration of Holy Communion which was also a big deal because in those days we only celebrated quarterly. We also did not celebrate on Easter, interestingly, just on Monday, Thursday. And the reading was from 1 Corinthians. And that reading, by the way, was the primary reading for many centuries in the history of the church. When I was first ordained, I served at Christ Church Corning, and in those days, before increased sensitivity about cultural appropriation, we actually celebrated a Christian Passover, complete with an approved text from the Jewish Reformed tradition. And that on, on that occasion, of course, the primary reading was all of Exodus, practically. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and our sort of crude imitation of the Passover meal, the reading about the angel of death passing over the homes of the Jewish slaves. It's really now considered very bad form to try to have a Christian Passover. Beginning in 1985, I have celebrated the foot washing every Holy Week and read from the Gospel of John. The foot washing ceremony also has a long history in preparation for Easter, going back to the earliest days of the church and then skipping along to the Middle Ages and then going in and out of fashion until our own day. The commentary on the American Prayer Book notes that Queen Elizabeth I, Queen Elizabeth the Great, made it a practice to wash the feet of 20 poor women for the royal Maundy. And the word, of course, Maundy comes from the Latin by way of the French, simply meaning commandment. As in, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. The word monde has also come to mean ablution or washing. The 1979 prayer book restored the washing of feet to the Monday Thursday observance with the barest of directions, very few directions at all, and made it optional, both as uh, something to do and something to participate in. <coughs> the liturgy for Monday Thursday is one that invites us to step into Christ-like behavior toward one another. And of course, there are difficulties with this liturgy as well. It was crafted in the 80s in an era when we were perhaps not as sensitive to power differentials as we are now, and perhaps did not recognize the particular vulnerability of women in the foot washing ceremony. There is an intimacy that does not always ring true in some contexts. And it must be said that participation in the foot washing is discretionary, not mandatory. But we're in a, a very good tradition because Peter didn't like the foot washing either. <laughs> and for a lot of the same reasons, right? Peter understood foot washing as hospitality offered by a hospitable host for the guests, cleansing the dust from their feet. Uh, in rich households, a servant would do that. In poor households, water would provide, be provided. You'd wash your own feet. But in no house would the head of the household wash the guest's feet, because to do so was to disrupt the normal protocols of place and status, and to put the one who should be honored 
in the place of a servant. And Peter felt that acutely and protested that it should not be. His teacher and master should not stoop to wash his feet. Now, in the nearly 40 years that I've done the foot washing, I have never found it to be anything but awkward. <laughs> uh, even in a land where we're all supposedly equal, there's enough status, enough propriety, and enough modesty to make the foot washing uncomfortable. And then there are the issues of power. So I think we get it. I think we understand Peter's objection. And yet, in the way that Jesus often picked a homely example to make a divine point, in washing their feet, Jesus shows the disciples who he is and who they should be. He literally stoops to earth. We have to catch the movement of the incarnation. Christ came down all the way to the ground. Christ came down and washed his disciples' feet. And he does that with love and care, fulfilling a very simple and basic need. This is an act of love and respect that takes no notice of anything other than need. And Peter wanted to refuse. And I think we do too. And so Jesus challenged him. Jesus said, this is who I am. You have no part in me unless you let me serve you. And Peter responded impulsively, then wash all of me. And Jesus said gently, it's not about bathing. It's about service. It's not about bathing. It's about service. What we do this evening is act out in the simplest of ways the relationship that we should be in with one another a relationship of respect, love, and mutual service, following the example of our teacher and Lord, without regard to place or status. This is the standard for our relating with one another, and indeed, it is our standard for relating to the whole world. Serving others in this way requires us to get over ourselves, to act with a certain humility, to see one another as God sees us, the washing of feet is symbolic, of course. True love requires more than clean feet. It's a symbol. And it, it is true that our relationships are not likely to be as other-interested and other-centered as Jesus intends. And yet, I think the foot washing reorients us to a proper relationship with one another. It dismantles any pretense of status. John repeatedly makes the point in the gospel that Jesus washed Judas's feet too. In this time of division, when so much is made of our differences, when some in power question the very humanity of immigrants and people of color, the foot washing serves as a kind of course correction and attitude adjustment. Jesus of Nazareth, a brown man, came for us all and serves us all according to our needs. So I know it's awkward. My cheeks will flush. But whether we participate or not, I hope we will recognize the humble, respectful posture of mutual service, which is to characterize all our relationships. May it be so. Amen. Amen.